Good morning and welcome to today's online service. I trust that you've had a great week staying at home and doing the right thing, maybe catching up on a few jobs, doing some reading, phoning a friend, however you've spent it. We just thank you for being part of our service here this morning and welcome. It's the 8th of the 8th, 2021 and it's great to be able to sing together, share together, pray together and hear from God together. We encourage you at home to sing along as well. Don't just sit there and be a spectator, but let's be a participator together as we worship the Lord this morning.
people use the word awesome or puppets use the word awesome, it should be directed to God because God is most awesome. kids just gearing up for a bit of a jumping session we have a number of competitors here today and uh, oh who's that oh Queensland starts us off and we're gonna see do you think we can jump over that one all right we'll give it a whirl you ready yes hold on go he's made it Yay! he's made it thank you Thank you. Representing the heart of the nation, welcome to the jump of the day. Do you reckon we can do it? Maybe. Yes, he's done it, he's done it. Woo! Oh, you can clap. Thank you very much, children. How tall can man jump is the question g'day everyone i'm going for the big jump today do you reckon you can jump that high kids well because we're going transparent we'll check out uh, if we can get there hold on Go! Oi, oi, oi! Hi everyone. Um, looking a bit high, this one. Not sure if uh, I can cope with it. Let me see. Um, it's a challenge. It's actually uh, nearly as tall as me. Just wait till I measure it, can you? Oh. Yep, that's pretty tall. Might be a bit too tall. Um, Maybe I need to sort of get a good run up. Where did it go? Oh, it's still there, is it? Maybe we could uh, just bring it down a little bit, eh? How about there? That's better. Come on, blues. Did it. Thank you, one and all. True blue, Aussie, you. So kids, some things are tough and hard and difficult, and some things seem easy. The Bible in 1 Corinthians 9 says, you know how many runners enter a race and only one of them wins the prize. So run to win. Athletics work can be hard to win a crown that can't last, but we do it for a crown that will last forever. I keep my body under control and make it my slave so I won't lose out after telling the good news to others. Because the race we're in 
is really to follow Jesus all the way to heaven. Whether, oh, this one's ears uh, locked up on us. Whether we're running or jumping or whatever, whether it's that high or this high or this high or very high, we need God's strength to help us to do our best physically and our extra best spiritually. So enjoy what you see, do your best always and honour God with your whole life. from the scriptures in John chapter 16 verses 25 to 33. These things I have spoken to you in figurative language but the time is coming when I no longer speak to you in figurative language but I will tell you plainly about the Father. In that day you will ask in my name and I do not say to you then that I pray to the Father for you for the Father himself loves you because you have loved me and have believed that I came forth from God. I came forth from the Father and have come into the world. Again, I leave the world and go to the Father. His disciples said to him, See, now you are speaking plainly and using no figure of speech. 
Now we are sure that you know all things and have no need that anyone should question you. By this we believe that you came forth from God. Jesus answered them, Do you now believe? Indeed the hour is coming. Yes, has now come, and you will be scattered, each to his own, and will leave me alone. And yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. This is the word of the Lord. In America, someone gave me a copy of a magazine, which was supposed to be about the plain truth, but it seemed to miss the mark in terms of Jesus. And it disturbed me that what was being promoted was partially true, but it wasn't plain. It wasn't clear. It didn't have the clarity. And that's what the disciples were concerned about in this particular passage. Jesus seemed to be talking, as I've been accused of before, of talking in riddles, asking questions and promoting ideas, making people think deeply, but they're trying to discover the truth, truth trying to grasp for it. And here they're pleading with Jesus to speak plainly about the Father. And in recent years, many have. One of the key teachings in Youth with a Mission is the Father's heart. The Father heart of God is showing how important it is to have a good concept of the good God. And so the disciples are glad that Jesus starts to talk about the Father in more direct terms. He says, I came forth from the Father and I've come into the world again. I leave the world and I go to the Father. He knew where he'd come from. He knew who he was and he knew where he was going. And they're probably the three keys that most people can't sort out in our day and age. Where they've come from, who they are, and where they're going. As we consider this passage, I'd really like to concentrate on verse 33, which speaks to us clearly. He says, These things I have spoken to you. In other words, the conversation that was Jesus was having about the Father and about the plain truth that God wanted to reveal, these things I've spoken to you that in me you may have peace. It doesn't say guaranteed peace, but it does say the possibility, even the probability of peace. And Jesus is prophesied in Isaiah as being called the Prince of Peace. And the scripture speaks about the peace of God and the God of peace. And his father to him was peaceful and he was peaceful to others that were keen on avoiding evil. So the first thing is about peace and Ephesians 2.14 says, He himself is our peace who has made us one. And this month the elders are pretty keen on overcoming together it's one thing to overcome as an individual and we've seen that in some of the olympic sports that have been played but there's also team sports and it's been great to see the encouragement of those who have been supporting people in their sporting area from different countries but jesus here claims to be the one who gives peace who promotes peace who provides peace and who says, Blessed are the peacemakers. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Peace is something that can dwell within. 
and the peace of God as we pray and yield all things to God. The peace of God permeates our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. One commentator says it's picking up on the shalom of the Old Testament. It secures composure, dissolves fear, rules in the hearts of God's people and maintains harmony. The basis of the word peace is about oneness, togetherness and wholeness in Jesus' name. The second thing we say is in the world you will have tribulation. Guarantee it. I've termed it pressure. You have pressure. I remember talking to one of our older gentlemen who said, I believe it was on his ninth birthday, a mean teacher gave him nine cuts of the cane and his hand was swollen. And it was a very difficult thing, but that's the pressure. It's the what comes from the outside to try and intimidate what's on the inside. It hurts. It's painful. And Jesus said you will have that sort of pressure from the world. In fact, Timothy uh, would have received the letter from Paul that states this very thing. Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution, hardship, pressure, anguish from those who are critical, from those who are cruel. And he warns us about this, but don't forget it's the peace of God within that counteracts the pressure without or on the outside. My brother uh, had a bale of hay way up in the air and he was at the hay feeder and the centre of that bale came out and hit him, landed on his head and pushed him to the ground. And he must have hit the hay feeder at the same time. And the sense of pressure, the sense of heaviness, the sense of burden. And uh, his wife asked us to pray and pray we did. And God has uh, blessed him and his, well, he was at work all day yesterday, but he returned this morning after a bit of a checkup. And, uh, but it's that kind of pressure that you can expect from the world. Do you know, Jesus was in the world, but the world was not in Jesus. And that's a very significant thing. The third thing we might say, not only it's the peace from Jesus, not only the pressure from the world, but it's this motivational positivity. Peace is available. Pressure will come, but positivity is the choice we make to trust God and to be courageous. Because he says here, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. And this is before the cross. Jesus had overcome by not allowing himself to be worldly. He was honouring his father throughout. And there's a scripture in uh, 2 Timothy 1.7, a fairly familiar one. It says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. There's a positivity about Jesus. He did good. He went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. And he was a positive person. He was an encourager, a motivator. And I've been around some of those people in every congregation that we've been part of. And they're people who encourage others. They're people who get alongside others and promote others and encourage others and support others and lift others and pray for others regularly. And it all really comes from God. I like this little saying 
that I saw in Newcastle. And I've seen it in the recent every day with Jesus. It says, God is not against us for our sins, but for us against our sins. God knows our sin will kill us. And that's why he wants to free us from it. And so it's exciting to know that Jesus overcame the world. He's an overcomer and he calls us together to have peace, to be promoting the oneness that our elders are encouraging. Yes, we'll have pressure from wherever, whenever, with whomever, but there's a positivity that starts with the heart, with a renewed mind and a determination to follow God and to allow his Holy Spirit to fill us to overflowing for the sake of many. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for the peace that Jesus brings, for the togetherness. Lord, that we may face the pressure of the world unashamed and unafraid. And please help your positivity to flow through our lives that we may be motivators for others, overcomers together in Jesus' name. And the people said, Amen. How did the Father's love for us, how vast beyond all measure, that He should give His only Son to make the wretch His treasure? How great the pain of searing loss, the Father turns His face away. Mother chosen one, bring many sons to glory. Behold the man upon a cross, my sin upon his shoulders. Ashamed, I hear my mocking voice. Among the scoffers, it was my sin that held him there until it was accomplished. His dying breath has brought me life. I know that it is finished. I will not boast in anything, no gifts, no power, no wisdom, but I will boast in Jesus Christ, his death and resurrection. Why should I gain from his reward? I cannot give an I know with all my heart His blood has paid my ransom But this I know with all my heart His blood has paid my ransom Please join us for the Lord's Prayer Our, Our Father, Father in, in heaven, heaven. Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Hope you've enjoyed this time together. Thank you for being a part of this service. Have a fantastic week ahead. Whatever the future holds, we don't know, but we do know who holds the future. May the God of peace, who warns us about the pressure, but who provides us with the Holy Spirit, giving us positivity that we become overcomers together in Jesus' name. Go and live to the full. Amen.